welcome for yoga practice. I am glad to be here. Apologies that somehow these glasses are gonna keep reflecting the computer off of, unless I turn my head a little bit to the side. Uh, so today we're gonna to practice yoga, really looking at how yoga helps us to transition from when our mind becomes like a windy ceiling fan to where our mind becomes more like an ally. It can be our, our friend, our companion, um, a source of wisdom, forgiveness, kindness. And these things won't seem possible when shame has taken over your entire viewing screen, as it were, the, the viewing screen through which you're seeing the world and through which you imagine the world is seeing you. When shame takes over, that kind of blocks any other view from being there. So we want to take a look at how to transition from that kind of storm where we're in a lot of what we would call in yoga misperception. How do we come back to clear perception, to really knowing ourselves and having our mind, our wise mind, be an ally for us? So to begin this process, I'm going to ask you to take a seat on your blanket. I'll move back to my mat. So find your comfortable seat, the place that you feel upright, supported, and nourished. You can rest your hands in your lap. And you're welcome to close your eyes. And as you're dropping in for your yoga practice, just picture the ceiling fan of your mind actually slowing down. We can support that to happen by taking an inhale through the nose. We're going to do that in a very specific way in a moment. And then an exhale like we're just sighing. We're just letting it out. And during the exhale, we picture the ceiling fan slows down a notch. And then another notch. And then another notch. So this specific way that we'll inhale is that we'll bring the Right hand up, we're going to close the nostrils partly, just a little bit, with the ring finger and the thumb. And we're doing that to create a necessary draw for the diaphragm to draw the inhale in. And then we're going to exhale like we're sighing. We're just letting it all go. Let's try this. We'll do it five times. We'll partially close the nostrils and breathe in slowly at what is your pace. And then open the nostrils and exhale like you're sighing through the nose. When you feel ready for the next breath like that, then you partially close the nostrils and inhale slowly according to your body's pace and capacity. And then again, you exhale like you're sighing, just letting go of everything, imagining the ceiling fan of the mind, slowing down by another notch. And then you might have a couple sips for the breath before repeating that. Begin when you're ready to. And allow the exhale to be like a sigh through the nose. When you've done that five times, then lower your right hand back to your lap and just check in and see 
What is the speed of the ceiling fan of your mind? How to support that ceiling fan to slow down a little bit more. We'll do another pranayama. You're going to clasp the hands like this. Press the heels of the hands straight down. As you inhale, imagine the breath filling the first third of the body for the first third of the movement. When you're breathing in, then the middle third, and then the upper third. So you're going to pace that for yourself. It's not that you're actually interrupting the breath anywhere. You just want to have a sense that it's really filling as you move your arms, the breath is coming up to the high point. And then hold that for a few moments. And exhale, blow the breath out like you're breathing through a straw as you press your arms out to the sides of the room. Now let's try it together without interruption from instruction. So you clasp the hands, press down, and now breathe in smoothly each third of the breath without any interruption. Come to the highest point of your inhale in your own timing and then hold the breath. And push out with a straw exhale. And then deeply relax. And feel your body kind of recalibrating to what it's doing. We're going to repeat that. So clasp the hands, push down, and breathe in. And then blowing out. And then deeply relax again. So we had a longer, slower inhale when we partially closed the nostrils. Then we had a little slower, more purposeful exhale when we breathe out like a little straw through the mouth. So now what we're gonna do is use a, the tongue like a straw for the inhalation. It makes the breath slower, it cools it down. So if your pitta dosha has been like rising up, the fire of pitta moves the air of vata and makes that ceiling fan spin more. So this is a pitta cooling breath that we're gonna do. So you'll breathe in through the mouth with the tongue shaped like a little straw, like that. And as we're doing that inhale, we're gonna be raising the head up. So at the top of the inhale, then we exhale slowly out through the nose and we bring the head back down like this. So this is what one breath looks like you can watch here. So when you're exhaling through the nose there, you're going slowly and you're deliberately bringing the head down until your chin 
comes in towards your throat. It should feel like the whole back of the spine gets longer and your gaze is kind of down towards your heart. Like you're bringing the mind down out of that ceiling fan and placing it in the body, the place in your body, wherever that could be, that is non-threatening and non-activating. I like to think of it as placing my mind back in my heart. Let's do it three times. We start with the chin down. You'll shape the tongue like a little straw. And if your genetics don't let you do that, you can make the tongue like a little air conditioning unit. And the way you do that is the tongue goes behind the top two teeth and you still inhale through the mouth really slowly. So it's a cooling inhale. Or you can make the tongue shape into a straw like this. And then exhale really slowly through the nose as you bring your head back down and the throat is toned. The back of the body will be long and open. Repeat that twice more, each breath, only when you're ready to do it. And then one more time. And then notice the pace of the ceiling fan of your mind. And picture as the ceiling fan slows down, the parts of you that can be an ally to yourself, the parts that are kind, encouraging, forgiving, focused, wise, those parts become more available to you. And we'll take the blankets that we're sitting on. I'm sitting on two blankets. So I would recommend if you do have two blankets available that you can use two. And put the blocks within reach, please. So let's take these two blankets and make them into like a little yoga bolster. So they go like this. You can stack them about like that. And then lie on your back. So that when you lie down, the blankets are right under your shoulder blades. And as you lie back, you're gonna realize that the floor is a little bit far away for your head. So we take one block on the flat or medium setting, place that under your head, reach for the other block and place it between your hands like this. And then take the arms, let's go straight up towards the ceiling at first.
And breathe in, reach your arms up towards the ceiling, open the upper back. As you exhale, raise your arms overhead towards the floor. Go only so far as you feel like you really have smooth movement in your arms. You may or may not make it all the way to the floor. Keep the arms reaching with some strength and let's say um, stamina. Stretch your legs out in the other direction. And as you're reaching through your heels and your fingertips, notice where your breathing goes in your body. Press the back of your hips and hamstrings, calves and heels down against the floor. Allow the inner body to stretch, even if it's uncomfortable. And you know, if you've been having a difficult time with your body or food or thoughts or emotions, you might actually have abdominal tension and that is totally understandable and often feels difficult to work with. So here's a chance to be kind, to be considerate, even to be forgiving and also intelligent. Let's enjoy another deep breath in. Exhale completely, press down through the back of your hips, hamstrings and heels. And then inhale, raise your arms up towards the ceiling. You've got that block between your hands. Let's set that aside wherever that might be and take your arms out into a T-shape on the floor. And deeply relax your mind, your shoulders, your neck, your throat, your jaw, and your mind. Okay, so we're gonna focus on opening the upper back to give greater access for the breath and the mind to come down into what we call in yoga, the seat of the self, the inner self. So take the right arm up towards the ceiling, please. Bend your right elbow and place your right hand on your right shoulder. And then reach your elbow overhead. I've gotta move my block a little bit to make space there. So what you're gonna have is your right fingers end up under your right shoulder blade behind you. Point your elbow towards the wall behind you and reach over with your left hand to give a little support to your right elbow. <clears throat> Something you might've seen me do right there is that I, I lifted my shoulder up to walk my fingers further onto my shoulder blade. So right now my right fingers are kind of held down by my right shoulder blade. Use the left hand to help support your elbow. And breathe deeply into your right low belly. And exhale completely. Notice the tone in the lower part of your abdomen during the end of the exhale. Okay, and then release your right hand. What I'd like you to do is take your right arm straight up towards the ceiling and then out to the side slowly. And notice when your arm comes out to the side, does your arm get warmer, heavier, a little tingly? And how does it feel relative to your left arm? And then let's take the left arm straight up towards the ceiling, bend your left elbow, place your hand on your shoulder. And as you glide your elbow overhead, go ahead and do like I just did there where you pick up your shoulder and slide the fingers further under your upper back. And then reach over with your right hand to support your left elbow. And as you're supporting that, notice again your inhale and your exhale. With each breath, you can visualize the ceiling fan of the mind is slowing down during the exhale. And with your inhale, drawing in the parts of you that are capable of kindness, forgiveness, wisdom, 
on your own behalf. And with your next inhale, raise your left arm straight up towards the ceiling. And exhale, float it out to the side. And notice again, when you lay your left arm down, does it become warmer, heavier, a little tingly? And ask what you could sort of shed or release from the busyness of the mind. What are you able to let go of right now? Okay, now let's see what we can do about putting this block aside. And are you able to lower the back of your head down to the floor? And if your head doesn't quite reach, Clasp your hands behind your head to provide support. If your hand does reach, reach your arms overhead towards the wall behind you. If you're holding, sorry about that. If you're holding the back of your head with your hands, then like this, reach your elbows towards the wall behind you. If you've got the arms overhead, reach them straight. And for everyone, lengthen your legs out. And imagine you're getting some traction between your feet, your heart, and your hands. Notice when the breath has access to your body, and it might be that your inhale goes more naturally down into the pelvis, into the seat of the self, the home of your inner self. And so many of us are storing unresolved emotions or unresolved feelings, unmet needs. We're storing all that down there in the seat of the self where we're supposed to be able to take refuge or feel our own sense of grounding or centering. So let's breathe in another time to the lower belly and the pelvis. And then exhale, take the arms out to the side. Bend one knee and the other. Roll to your side. Support your head as you need to. And press up to sitting. Okay, welcome back up here into the world. Welcome back to this sort of reality. All right. Now let's take the blankets. You could use one to pad your knees. It's sometimes nice to have that extra padding. So let's open one blanket about like this like this and place it on your mat to support your knees and then come to table pose. Okay, in table pose, let's step the right hand well forward of the left hand. And notice that each time we do this, when the arms overhead like this, your body cannot do chest breathing. It has to rely on the diaphragm to breathe. So reach your hips back, drop your head down, and then turn your head to your left. And as you're drawing your right hip back away from your right shoulder, bring the breath into your right lower belly, right lower back, and the right sideways. And breathe in one more time. And then inhale, reach forward to your hands and knees, even though the hands are staggered. Walk the right hand back in line with your left. Take the left hand forward. And as you're gliding back, lower your right elbow down. Release the weight of your head and turn your head to your right. And as you're reaching back, allow the breath to come into the lower belly, left side waist, left lower back.
with each breath, you're kind of inviting yourself to come out of the windy ceiling fan of the mind and to return to this inner seat of the self. And then inhale and let's pull forward to the hands and knees, even though the hands are staggered. And now place your hands in line with each other and reach back to child's pose, relax the weight of your head. And draw the elbows back so your arms are somewhere near to your knees. You can also support your head with your hands or with a block or an extra blanket. And then walk your hands back towards your knees and rise up to kneeling. Okay, let's take this blanket now. So I was saying that, you know, down in the seat of the self and the pelvis and the lower belly, we have these unresolved emotions, unresolved feelings, unmet needs, right? That is extremely common. So what we're going to do is fold this blanket lengthwise half to half and half to half one side to the other and then half to half again like this and then take just the very top part and fold it again. So what happens, We this is how we talk about it in the language of yoga and um, Ayurveda, particularly with what we call the values. But let's say that your mind is acting like a spinning ceiling fan of thoughts and to do's and it's very likely to scatter or unground you. And let's say that that's become very familiar to you. So people sometimes tell me that they live from the, the, the head up or from the shoulders up, or they don't live from here down. They don't know what's going on down below. Well, one thing that's occurring is that all the energy is end ending up going up and spinning about like this. When yoga is asking us to come down into this lower region of the body, it's to tend to these emotions and feelings and needs that actually are there. But it's also to come back home to this indwelling, inbuilt place of refuge, this indwelling source of knowing yourself, of sensing your own wisdom. And again, your capacity for things like kindness, consideration, and so on. So we're actually gonna put some pressure on the belly using this is called the belly bolster. And the way that you rolled this right here, this very top roll is gonna be for your navel. So lie on your stomach, placing your belly button on the uh, rolled blanket that you made. And as you do that, come up to your elbows, walk the elbows forward. That means that you're stretching the abdomen. Curl the right toes under, lengthen that right leg back, touch the toes down. Curl the left toes under, lengthen that one back and touch those toes down. And see if your body is gonna naturally breathe into the lower belly. And you know what, it might be painful because there could be abdominal tension. That tension comes from the frenzy and the stress of daily life. It's also kind of the tension of having the unresolved emotions building up in there. Notice during the exhale, this kind of letting go, letting go, dropping in. And maybe the blanket gives you a little deeper massage, or maybe you get a little more comfortable with it. And then place your hands like a little pillow for your head. Now bend your knees so your feet are going to point up towards the ceiling. And let's treat the shins like windshield wipers and rock them side to side. So you are massaging the belly right now and that 
blanket roll that we made. When you tip your shins to the left, you're going to feel, hopefully, the blanket goes between your hip bones and your ribs and not pressing on your ribs. As you roll side to side, notice the massage across your abdomen. Appreciate yourself for making this effort right now, knowing that it might be a little bit uncomfortable. And some of this discomfort is happening right here in the present moment, of course. And yet some of it is the history of holding emotions or tension, blocking ourselves from being able to be down in the abdomen or the seat of the self in the pelvis. Let's return the shins to center. Lay your feet back down. Bring your head to center. Place your elbows on the floor. Tuck your toes under. Press down into your knees and lift your hips. Place your hands. Return to table pose. And then return to child's pose. You can stack the arms to support your head. It's okay to separate the knees to make space for the abdomen and the belly. And notice how your body next enjoys the inhalation. And also how you come to the exhalation. And perhaps it will feel like your whole body and your mind are sighing. And then walk your hands to your knees. And as you rise up to kneeling, we're going to take this blanket roll, unfold it, put it back in its original fold, please. like this and just set that aside we're going to come back to it in a few moments okay so that's quite a bit of work with the breath and the belly to come back home to come back down inside and again some of it might be uncomfortable so this is where we draw on our allies our internal allies for self-kindness self-care self-forgiveness self-understanding, self-wisdom, giving ourselves all the consideration we would give to a friend or an ally, not keeping that at bay from ourselves or holding it for only when we deserve it. It's an unconditional kind of regard for ourselves, not something that you have to earn or like build up credit for. So now I'd like us to stack these two blankets and place them on your yoga mat. You're gonna be putting your hips on these two blankets. So one way to get into position is to kneel facing the same way that your head's gonna go. Put your hips on your blankets and roll onto your back so that the blankets end up really supporting your sacrum and your knees will drop towards your shoulders. Like gravity is gonna to see to that Support for the knees to come in towards the shoulders. Let's hold behind the hamstrings and the calves. And as you've got the knees in snugly like this, roll a little bit side to side. Just check that you're in a comfortable place on the blankets. And when you get there, and open the knees to be as wide as the shoulders and make space for the lower belly. And picture your body sighing during the exhale, just sighing, letting everything go. Every time that we block ourselves or constrict or withdraw from ourselves, allowing all that to go.
And keeping it as your intention that when the ceiling fan in the mind slows down, you get to come back into the pelvis and the belly. I'd like you to place your left foot down across your right ankle over your left knee, and then bring the left knee back up. Clasp your hands behind your left hamstring. And come into this, we call this the figure four pose. As you're breathing in, connect with the sensations in your right hip. And notice if you tighten the abdomen or flinch or kind of get disgruntled with yourself if there are sensations there. It's a great time to practice the allyship of self-acceptance, self-care, self-forgiveness. And then place your left foot back on the floor. Place your right foot down with your left. Cross your left ankle over your right knee. Pick up your right knee. Reach between the two legs. Clasp behind your right hamstring. Now, as you're coming into this position, again, you might have some strong sensations in your left hip. It's a great chance to practice noticing how you respond to a dynamic sensation or a difficult sensation. And see if you might update that response to not be something coercive or uh, dislikable, not feeling disgruntled about your body having a tight spot but rather reaching in for the allies of self-kindness, self-appreciation. And then lower your right foot down with your exhale. Lower your left foot down as you touch your feet down. Place them so that your feet are hip distance apart. Also so they're parallel and let the pelvis relax. And then lift your hips just enough to slide these two blankets down until they are right behind your sitting bones and take your legs out over. So what's gonna happen is that the way the blanket is close enough to your sitting bones, your pelvis gets tipped a little bit back towards the floor. And that means that your lumbar spine might come down towards the floor. And then take the arms out to the side. Let's do palms face up. Close your eyes. You can imagine the ceiling fan in the mind is actually more like it. It was like a helicopter and we're coming down to land. So come down gently to land down in the seat of the self, which is in your lower pelvis and lower abdomen.
As you're dropping down to come back home, again, release all sense of frustration or inadequacy, any little tension you might have in the mind. Allow the abdomen to deeply relax, to welcome yourself back home. As your mind drops down into the pelvis, into your home, let each of your limbs get heavier with relaxation. Imagine your limbs letting go even more into the support of gravity. For every moment where you are able to let go, acknowledge that to yourself. And for any moment where your mind wanders, just very kindly bring it back. And allow your mind and your body to stay in the present moment. You're being welcomed back home. And it's an unconditional welcome.
Allow your arms and your legs to get more deeply relaxed, more connected to the ground beneath you. Allow the mind and the head to be heavy with relaxation. Deeply relax your mind, your senses. Stay at home in the pelvis. Nowhere else to go. Nothing else to do right now. Now in the letting go of the physical body, there's also the release of the tension that we carry when we have the unresolved emotions or feelings, the unmet needs. Now let's imagine the space we are creating inside and just allow some of those feelings or needs to return. They are returning to an inner sense of allyship Connection with compassion, presence, delight, wisdom. And just slowly roll your head to your right, roll your head to your left. Wiggle your right fingers when your head goes right, wiggle your left fingers when your head goes left. Now roll your head to the right, wiggle your left fingers, roll your head left, wiggle the right fingers. Roll your head to the right, wiggle the left toes, head to center, Roll your head to your left, wiggle the right toes. Roll to center. Bring the hands down to the pelvis or the belly. Say thank you to this home that's actually trying to bring us back home to ourselves all the time, even though we're also, we end up like covering it over or stuffing it full or um, leaving it hungry. You know, we do all these things still. This inner self loves us so much, it wants us to come back home. And then please bring your knees up. You can place your feet on those blankets and then roll to your side. Return to your seat. Come to your seat, rest your hands in your lap if you like. You're welcome to close your eyes or have them open.
It's up to you. Let me see if you've been kind of granted access to dropping down, down into the pelvis, into this, this home here. And one way you could notice that is, does the breath have access? As you connect to this place where your, your inner self is, your inner home is. Of course, we have another kind of self in the heart. And then we have a wise mind as well. But as you connect down in this home, just ask if there are any needs present right now that you can tend to. Any needs that are present right now that you could tend to. Like a need for assurance or grounding, a need for stability, maybe a need for creativity or frivolity or whimsy, or a need for connection, somebody who's resonant with you, who's resonant or attuned. Maybe you have a need for being closer to nature, like walking out into the, the autumn here in Oregon is still so beautiful, so connecting with nature. And how can you care for yourself wisely and well in the hours to come? Please raise your hands to your heart. And here we access those forgiving, compassionate, loving kindness, the qualities of the heart that are inclined to love, acceptance, forgiveness, appreciation. Thank you very much for being here. Namaste. And if anybody has questions about a practice like this, you can always leave questions below the video in the platform in uh, YouTube and other places. And I'll come back to see what your questions are, how that can be helpful.